Uh, another reason why industry producer beats are better than yours. This is honestly like the biggest thing. All right, what's good YouTube? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys why industry producer beats sound better than yours. Basically, this whole video is gonna be me doing a rundown of me making a beat from start to finish and going through every single little tip and trick that you need to know to make a beat as good as an industry producer. The reason I want to do this is because both on Patreon as well as in the JMSC Discord, I see so many guys asking questions about like, oh, like, how do I do this? How do I make my drums better? Oh, what's wrong with my beat? What's not wrong with my beat? You know, I wanna like basically make a video going over all those things that you guys are asking me about all the time. And yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with the melody because it's just so much easier I find. So I'm going to use the scale of E flat minor because it's the easiest scale by far to remember and one of the most used scales in like rap. It's just going to be all the black keys plus the B note and the F note. When you look up like the progressions used in popular hit songs, it's usually starting on like the one, the four, the six. And the reason is because the one, four, and six all contain the root note. So like the one would be, the six would be, and the four would be, it's just start with that note, it's so much easier. I'm gonna start with it like this. And the first thing I'm gonna lay out now with the rest of the chords is the root note, which is gonna be the lowest note of the chord progression. So I'm gonna make that now. So you guys are probably wondering why I did here and notice that this note is not in scale. You can usually give your melody like a really jazzy feel by like adding or pitching, I mean, this note up at the very end, the root note. It only really like works with this very specific chord, the, uh, the seventh. You know, that already sounds great. So now I have the chords laid out, a very important thing to do and a very big mistake I see you guys doing all the time is like, you need to take little steps when you're making your melody. Don't just like go all full out, be like, oh, I'm gonna go like staccato, vibrato, crescendo, memendo doing all that all at once and like, it's not gonna work. Instead, like, let's go simple. Like, let's, uh, let's move these notes like this. When you have like notes super clustered down like this and all like right next to each other, it's gonna be very difficult to layer sounds because all those notes are closer together, which means they're gonna be like clashing more in the frequencies. So just spread that out. You know, you can pitch up the voicings, strum it. Very common thing people do to give it a little bit more of a human feel. Now, normally I feel like people listening to this would be like, they're gonna be like, oh, you have to add like a top melody to this. And the reason I'm not is because I'm thinking of structure all the time when I'm making my beats. And that's very important because as you think of structure while you're making stuff, you're gonna make like way better decisions of like, oh, is this sound gonna be playing through the whole beat? Is it gonna be like gross beat eventually? Am I gonna take it in and out? Is it gonna play for the chorus? Like when is it playing in your structure? Keep that in mind. I can see this being like a sound that gives more energy and like gets layered on top of another sound. So I'm not gonna add a main melody and play it on top of that. Instead, I'm gonna find a different sound that I'm gonna have playing throughout the entire beat. So I'm gonna go in Omnisphere here. Uh, I'm gonna go into my bank. Best Omnisphere bank ever done at me. Like, I think that sounds cool. Huge thing that you gotta do because you gotta, again, be thinking of the drums and other sounds is EQ out the low ends. I always use this EQ at the bottom because like, if I ever add effects, you add like reverbs, delays, another huge mistake I saw people doing all the time. Even if you EQ it beforehand, if you add a reverb after, it's still gonna add a little bit of like muddiness to the lows because that reverb is gonna fade into the low ends, even though there isn't any low ends initially. This EQ is always gonna be the last thing that's on the mixer no matter what you put on there. So I always just EQ the bottom like this. And I want one more sound just to layer on top of that to give it a little bit more emphasis because it's not standing out as much as I want it to. Four sounds, as you can see here for the melody. A huge mistake I see people making all the time is using way too many sounds. You know, if a sound doesn't work, a sound doesn't work. Just like change it. But like, I've noticed as a guy who's like made thousands of beats, like anytime you go over five sounds, the beat almost like always sucks. But like once you start going over that, you're doing too much, I promise you. So as you can see with this melody, what I did was like, I just changed the pitch of like this note and like change this note from a, a sharp to a G sharp. Little things like that will go a long way in making the melody just a little bit more interesting without having it be completely different. Okay, just like that, melody done. Like that's enough right there. Like we can mess with it later if we want to add like gross beats and effects for transitions. But for now, I'm just gonna go straight to the drums. Another reason why industry producer beats are better than yours. This is honestly like the biggest thing. I swear it is. It's using good drum sounds. Like it doesn't matter 
how good mixed your beat is, if your levels are right, if it's like arranged properly, you know, that like stuff doesn't matter. If the drums suck, it's like you can't change that. Like you need to make sure you have good drum kits. Uh, super simple 808 pattern right there. Again, I'm literally just following the root note, which is the lowest note. As for the drum patterns, I got two very simple sounds. I always just like start the drums like this because just start with something simple. Like don't, again, like the melodies, don't start by going over complex like changing like effectrix everywhere. You don't need to do that kind of stuff. Also, when you're making the 808 patterns, the thing I'm always keeping in mind of is how the 808 is hitting relative to the root note of the melody. It's like, duh, 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 duh. Like it adds like a bounce to it, you know what I mean? So basically what I have laid out here, you could call it the equivalent of like what we did with the melodies where we just like made sure we got like a chord figured out, like a general progression figured out that we're gonna use for the beat. Now it's like, okay, now let's start throwing in a little bit more things to make it creative and unique, you know what I mean? Uh, first thing I wanna do, like a kick, uh, this kick, hello. Usually when you make the 808, like you also want to keep the kick pattern in mind because like those are the two things that bounce off each other, you know what I mean? Also, here's a little cool trick. If you have a mouse like this, if you want to like switch sounds really quickly, I always do this. I'll just like click and then you use these side buttons like this to automatically drag and drop like every single sound. You know, just little things like that, you know, throw sounds in and out. That's another mistake I see people do all the time. Like when I'm actually like watching them, mentoring them, making beats, it's like they think they like throw a sound in. It's like, oh, I can't change the sound now. It's like, no, you can just, you know, don't force yourself to use the sounds that you just like threw in there, I guess. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is like add some hi-hat rolls, you know, I'm just kind of gonna force these in here because even though I wouldn't really add that many hi-hat rolls to this beat, if any, I just wanna like make a point here about how hi-hat rolls work. As for hi-hat rolls, like I see people messing up their hi-hats a lot. If it isn't for like sound selection, the big problem is like two things. One, using, well, like two. One is using way too many hi-hat rolls. I don't mean like amount, I just mean like types of hi-hat rolls. Stick to like three, I'd say at most, is usually like the best amount for me. Another cool trick I learned also though about hi-hat rolls is usually like it sounds really good when the hi-hat rolls are hitting right when the kick does or the 808 so like the kick hits here like, but then i have a kick hitting right here so i just kind of like put it there like because i think that sounds cool like gives it a little bit of a bounce you know i feel like if you're not going like this like you're not doing you're doing something wrong you know what i mean uh, another thing I'm gonna do real quick with the 808 to keep it more interesting, and this only really works in these very specific notes, C5, B4, A sharp four, and A4, because first off, once you start going down below A4, that's when your 808 starts to sound really like muddy and terrible. But the reason I singled out those notes is because those are the only notes that sound both good in like the four as well as five octave in FL Studio. So like, if I were to pitch these up like this, it's still gonna sound good. I mean like. So now just like arrangement. We were thinking of arrangement the entire time that we were making this beat. And I guess that's like the big key takeaway that I want people to take away from this video is that like, you're always thinking of arrangement. Like what is this gonna sound like in the actual song? <laughs> Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is you can see here is I add a soft clipper and parametric EQ to the master. I like to put a soft clipper on my beats just because like it removes a little bit of the distortion and just makes the drums hit a little bit harder. And beforehand, very important that you put it before the soft clipper is a parametric EQ. Usually like what I do is I'll boost this a little bit and mess with this to like 200, 250 to see where it hits well with the kick and 808. If it has like a lack of mids in the beat, I'll take this up to like no more than one dB in the mids. And this, I always turn this up to like four dB sometimes. But depending on how it sounds with the beat, it just makes the drums a little bit crispier when it hits in the high end very important a lot of people think they gotta do like all this crazy stuff in their arrangements sure that stuff can be cool sometimes but like two like bars or pattern blocks for your intro second so start going over this it's just like the artist gonna be sitting there like 
you know, like next, like play the next beat, you know what I mean? Four bars, for me it's two, but for you guys it should be four. Four pattern blocks for the verse, or not the verse, the chorus, I mean. And then the six bars here for me, three for the actual verse. And if they wanna change the arrangement, they're gonna do that, but like this structure right here, it's so easy to wrap on. And we made this beat in like 27 minutes. No, like 30 minutes. Keeping it simple, always thinking of structure with every single thing you do. Sticking to fundamental six four structure, starting off with your fundamentals first. Good sound selection, always. Uh, choosing melodic sounds that are good from good VSTs, knowing which sounds are going to be the ones that play at certain points of the structure, keeping the drums unique, but not too boring and too plain, as well as not too over complex, doing little things in the arrangement just to keep it a little bit more interesting and signal when the beat is changing and adding little variations to like the pitches of your notes and your melodies, as well as like your 808 patterns to keep it a little bit more interesting. And yeah, that's basically everything you need to know to make a beat like an industry producer. Instagram and Twitter, fan of the God, make sure to go follow me. Also, I have a Patreon linked in the description for private tutorials that I can't post on YouTube, as well as exclusive kits, help, like beat feedback and stuff like that, votes on what videos I'm gonna be doing next, as well as various other things, so make sure to go check that out. Also, if you want any of these drum kits that I use in this tutorial, there's a link in the description to my BeatStars page where you can go get them. And yeah, that's basically it. I'm out. Peace.